All right, let's take a look at uh, chapter eight. Chapter eight deals with joints, are also known as articulations. An articulation is a functional junction between bones. So this is showing an MRI of the knee. So if we go to this, yeah, that's a good picture to start off with. Uh, there are two functions in terms of joints. One is that they hold the skeleton together. And secondly, some joints are gonna allow uh, the skeleton to have mobility. All right, so let's take a look at the classification of joints. We're gonna start off with fibrous joints. So uh, a fibrous joint is a type of joint uh, in which two or more bones are joined by fibrous tissue. What we see here is there's no joint cavity with these guys. So the first are sutures. So we see sutures in the skull. So a suture is an immovable fibrous joint. Uh, it's gonna attach bones of the skull. As I said, it's immovable, no movement allowed there. Uh, next is a syndesmosis. This is a joint in which the bones are united by a ligament or sheet of fibrous tissue. So this is showing uh, syndesmosis between the uh, ulna and radius here. Uh, we also find a syndesmosis between the tibia and the fibula. Next is a gomphosis. A gomphosis is a joint in which a cone-shaped process is fastened in a bony socket. So here's a cone-shaped process, there's the bony socket, and we have fibers uh, attaching those to there. So this is what we see with teeth into the mandible or teeth into the maxilla. All right. The next type are called cartilaginous joints. A cartilaginous joint, this is a type of joint in which two or more bones are joined by cartilage. And this produces a slightly movable joint. Um, so the first type is called a synchondrosis. This is a joint in which the bones are united by hyaline cartilage. And so this is what we see here between the sternum and the ribs here. These are the costal cartilage, and this allows for movement of the rib cage. All right. Um, so uh, next, these are, are not so move, uh, movable here, but you know, the, um, the epsial plates are another synchondrosis. We, uh, actually, this is our pelvis, which is made of three bones that fuse together, and we have a synchondrosis before the fusion of those. All right, uh, next is a symphysis. So a symphysis uh, is a joint in which the bones are connected by fiber cartilage. So the inner vertebral discs are actually symphysis. Right. Once again, they provide a little bit of movement, but since we have so many vertebrae, this you can get uh, some good movement there as well. Uh, also, the pubic symphysis between the pelvises uh, is another one of these uh, symphysis. All right, uh, fiber cartilage there. Lastly, our synovial joints. Uh, a synovial joint is typically what we think of a joint. This is a freely movable joint exhibiting a joint cavity. So let's take a look at the general structure of a synovial joint. So first we see articular cartilage, which we've talked about before. This protects the ends of the bones there. Next, we have a joint cavity. So we have a cavity there. Uh, so this, uh, this space is filled with synovial fluid. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it is enclosed by the joint capsule. So this is the joint capsule here. So that joint capsule, uh, the inner layer is synovial membrane. The outer layer is made of tendon, all right? Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, it's made of ligament, not tendon. Sorry about that. Uh, the fluid in here, uh, just like serous membrane, that's synovial, uh, so it's like serous fluid, the synovial fluid uh, reduces friction between the bones, all right? So uh, that synovial membrane is gonna produce that synovial fluid, which fills that cavity. And so when we move our bones, uh, we're not having bone against bone, it's hyaline cartilage against hyaline cartilage, but not really a whole lot because we have that synovial fluid. And so this really reduces the friction in here so that when we have articular cartilage against articular cartilage with that synovial fluid in there, this is 40 times slicker than ice against ice. All right, so the next few here are not found in all um, um, synovial joints. So next are reinforcing mem uh, ligaments. These are ligaments other than those in the joint capsule. Now, unfortunately, I don't have pictures of these, but uh, like the anterior cruciate ligament, the posterior cruciate ligament found in the knee right there, there's the anterior cruciate ligament. All right, so those are reinforcing ligaments. The knee also shows meniscus, menisci is plural, meniscus is singular. And these are pads of fiber cartilage for shock absorption. Also, what we can see in the knee are these bursa. So bursa are fluid-filled sacs, synovial fluid that fills in those there. They're lined by synovial uh, membranes. They actually aid in the movement of tendons. 
and they are shock displacers, so uh, spreading the shock over more than one area. If you have a bursa, uh, so yeah, if you have a bunion, uh, a bunion is an enlarged bursa. All right, let's take a look at uh, types of uh, synovial joints. The first are ball and socket. So in a ball and socket, uh, basically you have a one bone that ends kind of in a ball-shaped structure, and then you have kind of a cup-like structure in the other bone. This is found in like the shoulder and the hip. All right. Uh, next is a lipsoid joint. So in lipsoid, uh, you have one uh, curvature of a bone, and the other one has a complementary shape to that curvature. Uh, this is what we see uh, between the atlas. Uh, that's our first vertebrae in the occipital condyles of the skull. Next is a plane joint. That's where you have two flat bones next to each other. All right. Uh, so we see this uh, uh, between the ankle, uh, between carpals, uh, between tarsals. We also see it between uh, vertebrae. Uh, next is a hinge joint. Uh, so in a hinge joint, it moves just like the hinge on a door. So this is what we see with the elbows and knees. Next is a pivot joint. So a pivot joint uh, is where it moves around an axis. So we see this between the radius and ulna, so we get this movement. We also see it between the atlas and the axis, so giving us this movement. Lastly is a saddle joint. So we find this at the base of our thumb there. And basically, both bones uh, have the shape of a saddle. And so this gives us a variety of movement, which we see down here at the base of that thumb. All right, let's take a look at types of synovial movements. All right, so the first is a flexion. A flexion is a decrease in joint angle. So when she brings her arm up, that's a flexion. There's a joint angle there. When she brings that arm back down, that's an extension. So an extension is an increase in joint angle. So this is showing a few of these flexions and extensions. A hyperextension is the excessive extension of the parts of a joint. Typically, we associate that with damaging that joint somehow. Uh, next are uh, two with a foot. So one is dorsiflexion. This is a flexion of the foot upwards towards the body. So if you take your foot off the gas, that's a dorsiflexion. Put your foot onto the gas, that's a plantar flexion. This is a flexion of the foot downwards away from the body. Okay. Some people just say, uh, like, if you plant your foot, you know, that's a plantar flexion. All right. All right. Uh, next is abduction and adduction. Abduction is a movement of body part away from the midline. So you bring your arm up, that's an abduction. You bring it back down, uh, so up, uh, abduction. Bringing that back, part back down, that's an abduction. That's a, a movement of uh, a body part towards the midline. So adduction towards the midline. Uh, abduction, uh, abduction is away from the midline. I know I'm just getting those confused. Think about like if you're abducted, you're taken away. So that's an abduction. You can also do this with the hands. So this is an abduction, adduction, all right? Next is a, a rotation, all right? So a rotation is uh, the movement of part around an axis like this, like this. You know, this is showing that uh, rotation of the arm there as well. Uh, next is a circumduction. Circumduction is a movement of part in a wide circle, all right? So moving your arm like so, all right? Uh, specific rotations for the lower arm here. Uh, one is pronation. This is a rotation of the lower arm where the palm is up. Or, or, sorry, where the palm is down is pronation. Rotation of the arm so the palm is down. Supination is a rotation of the lower arm so the palm is up. So that's supination, pronation. All right. Next deals with a couple with the feet. So eversion and inversion. Eversion is a, a turning of the foot so the sole faces laterally. And inversion is turning the foot so the sole faces medially. Next is elevation and depression. Elevation is a raising of a body part. Depression is a lowering of a body part. So elevation, raising those shoulders. Depression, lowering those shoulders. Uh, so this is showing a um, protraction and retraction. Um, so protraction here is a moving part forward. Retraction is a moving part backwards. All right. So you can also do this show protraction, retraction. All right. Next are excursions. So lateral excursion is a moving the mandible to either the right or left side of the midline. So lateral excursion is moving off to the side. Uh, medial excursion is returning the mandible to the neutral position. So going from this back to the midline. Okay. 
Uh, next is opposition, right? So opposable thumbs, right? So this is a moving the th thumb towards the other fingers. So that's uh, opposition. And reposition is moving the thumb to the neutral position, back to there. 